as you all know, we had to rechange this recording because my phone underwent a phone transplant. <laughs> that was not really fun. Wait, so what did they take out and put back in? I don't know. Something about the hardware. They were like kernel issues, whatnot. I don't understand the phone things. This is why there's <laughs> Apple genius people out there. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. hello, hello, dear listeners. I am in the virtual studio. And then we have a very special guest who you may have actually heard before. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name's Siale. I am a fourth year at the University of Utah. I was originally classmates with Hab, but um, I'm excited to be back with the bundles. But one of the fun new updates is that CLA has matched in internal medicine at the University of Washington. Woohoo! <laughs> Finally got my first job at 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a vibe. Um, and so I think like now being a fourth year, you've got to do like a lot of really cool things. Like there was a trip that you recently did, right, CLA? Yeah, fourth year is the best because someone told me they're like, if you see a picture of a fourth year, they're most likely on a beach somewhere or something like that. <laughs> so fourth year is great. But I recently just got back from a trip to Tonga where, uh, where my dad's from. I did a global health elective. I was out there for about four weeks and was lucky enough to spend some time learning from the doctors in, in Tonga for a month. And I think this is like actually a really good segue for us to introduce our conversation topic, which is that for this episode, I really wanted to focus on like health policy. Um, and this is why Siale is a guest in this episode. Um, she got her um, master's of public health. She's also just a cool person in general. So we always like benefit from getting Ciale's insights. With all of this, Eliza, talk a little bit to the listeners about why having a conversation about health policy feels important to you. All right. So this is our disclaimer that all thoughts and ideas are solely ours that do not represent or in no way a reflection of our schools or respective places of work. Yeah. I think health policy is something I've really begun to have an interest in because I think when I started medical school, oh, old two years ago, not very long ago, I was like, oh, medicine, like this is um, where you impact change. But I think as you become more familiar, you realize how much policy and I think systems are involved in impacting that change. And I think that's really kind of the juncture of where health policy meets. And as Siali has been on her um, rotation in Tonga, it's been phenomenal to like just see it through like an Instagram lens, which I know isn't always the most detailed or maybe have a, a, a filter on it, so to speak. But it has really been so meaningful to see that. As a part of medicine, one of the things that I found that I've like been forced to really explore and to really like think about a bit more deeply, um, similar to you, Eliza, is thinking about health policy. My introduction to like health policy um, was through the Population Health Elective. I think I had heard about it and I knew about it as a theory, but I wasn't really interested in it. If I'm going to be real, I was never mm -hmm. like, I cared a lot about community health. I cared a lot about like working in underserved communities, but I'm kind of like a bit of like a Scrooge when it comes to legislative <laughs> processes and thinking about policies in general. And so I completely ignored it. And then I did population health and I realized, wait, this does have impact. Thinking with all of that in mind, just to like start off the convo, I'd love to hear from both of you, maybe to start with Siale about your introduction a bit more to like health policy and how you feel about it based on your experiences. Yeah, I think I'm the same as Hat. I was never like interested in it. And I also just had to, I don't know if I'd say poor attitude, but I think I felt like, you know, a lot of my communities have been hurt by policy. And so it's a reason for me not to engage in it. Also took the population health pathway with HAB, but really where this all started was during the pandemic, the Utah legislatures were looking for a place to take funding from. And one of the first places they went was the uh, state-run health clinics here in Utah. And so some of the local Pacific Islander organizations invited students to lobby, basically to write letters to state reps about why that's a bad idea. And during the pandemic, Pacific Islanders and Hispanics were like two or three times more likely one to be like infected with COVID-19, but then to be like hospitalized and to die from it. So it was crazy stats. 
So a state-run health clinic, like background, that's like a safety net clinic for those who are uninsured or those with maybe Medicaid or other public health insurance. And so they serve a lot of the people of color in Utah. And so in my mind, this like didn't make sense that the people that were being hurt the most were going to lose resources, a really important thing for them. And so I became like very passionate about like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. I'm going to write my local state reps and send these like long letters um, to them. And then like to my surprise, two of them invited me for a phone call and I'd like never done anything like that. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to tell them like how wrong they are. and I'm going to like stop this. I'm going to keep the clinics open. And I was like so fired up about it. And then did the phone calls and felt like an idiot after both of them because I realized I didn't know how policymakers think. And like, it was really hard. They were asking me a lot of questions I just like couldn't answer. And then started to think about population health and then was starting to see like how it's all related. I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff's actually like really important. And like, when I go to talk to a policymaker, like I got to be better prepared. And I kind of you know, after this conversation, they ended up closing the clinics. And I think I took that kind of personally, like it was my fault, even though I think the legislatures had like already made up their mind far before, like I ever had a conversation with them, but I took it kind of personally. And then just seeing like how it was all connected, I felt like, you know, I could be a better advocate for my community if I tried to learn more about how things work, because you can't change a system that you don't understand. And so I think the first step for me was like, I, no one's ever taught me a lot of this. And like, yeah, I took like basic US history and government in high school, but I really didn't understand like what policymakers care about. And as much as I'd love to think they care about my stories, about my family that I was trying to share and my community members, like that wasn't enough. And I think those are important pieces, but understanding like how to better talk to them, that was something I was interested in, which led me down this like path of like, how should I look at things during third year? I was like, I, I think I just need more time. I need to step away from medicine and I need to like really understand the bigger picture of this all. And so that's what like pushed me to like leave for a year and to learn more about it. So like, I don't consider myself like a policy guru. This I'm like very new in this space, but um, it's something that I feel like is important because like no one teaches you that in medical school, like Eliza was saying, like, you're like, I go to medicine because I want to help people. And then you realize like how limited you kind of are in a way, like, because you're working within a system and you can only like, you feel like you can only do so much. And so um, better understanding how that system works. So you know how to make changes to it for the better. I love that. It should be noted how the humility in that response, right? Like, I don't know. It's hard. And I think health policy kind of does have that bitter taste, as you mentioned, when you're assessing or exposed to like the health disparities in the community and, you know, ensuring that there's like access to high quality care, you know, and the well-being of like entire populations. And then you look having those considerations taken into account and then advocating for these things. It, it can be difficult, but I'm really appreciative of how you mentioned becoming a better advocate. I think that's that's phenomenal. And that's a lesson I need to learn and take away from this. And it's so interesting because I feel like now as I go through residency, there's just like so many moments where I'm sitting there thinking about things that I want to like change. And I realize that a lot of times the interventions that we have to do are actually on a very like policy level. I might feel this very like deeply also as a pediatrician because a lot of our health and a lot of our interventions are community based and school based. For instance, just today I was talking about like substance use disorder and prevention of it for adolescents. And a lot of it is actually based in the school. So like as like healthcare providers, like we actually don't have as much like weight and like being able to do those interventions. But what we do have weight for is to do like the policy changes and to like really like campaign for better funding for like schools to like implement these programs across all like equity lines, like not just like really bougie, rich schools. It is something that I've like reflected a lot on is that like I can't just ignore something just because I hate the elitism or like the like difficulty of moving with it. Like you kind of sometimes need to have some knowledge. And I'm curious, Siali, like understanding a little bit more about how this like carried through for you when you were in Tonga. 
anytime you take a global health trip as a medical student, and I think even like in the future as a provider, you're just like, can I be actually be helpful in this system that I don't really understand? And, and like, what can I do? And so I think anytime like you're approaching a global health elective or experience, you have to be very open-minded in that, like, you know, maybe all I do at the end of the day is I just watch and I just learn about how the system works. And I think that was something like background. I've said this before on here, but like I identify as Tongan and then also Hispanic, but my dad is from Tonga, grew up there. And so I've always had this desire to be able to like go back there and to hopefully be helpful and be a tool and support where where it was needed. And then kind of felt like they don't really want my help. And maybe like, I'm not, I don't know. And so I like went back and forth for a long time about like whether or not I should do this elective, but I decided I would go and just take whatever was handed to me. And if they didn't want me to do much, like we wouldn't do anything and um, just learn about the system. So especially like as a medical student, you don't know how much or how little you can like hands on do. But I went in with the mind of like, I'm going to learn as much as I can about the system. I'm going to ask people questions about things that maybe other people don't care about. And it was really insightful and impactful. But just like some basic background about how Tonga's healthcare system is, um, it's all publicly funded. So uh, which means the government pays for healthcare in Tonga for all of its citizens. So regardless, there's no like in the US, we have like an income level you have to make below this in order to qualify for Medicaid. And then for Medicare, we know you have to be this old and you basically pay into it all your life so that when you turn 65, then you're eligible. But in Tonga, everyone's health care is paid for by the government. And so, which is lovely. And I think it should be like that everywhere. But um, in a, a small place like Tonga, that can come with like, you know, they only have so much money. And so it's nice that they pay for everything, but because they pay for everything, they're very limited in what they can do and like what medications they have available to them. And so understanding that you're working within a system that it's free, it's essentially free, but it can really change what resources you have available to treat your patients. And then they have, they don't have the wide variety of subspecialists that we have here. And so like understanding that too, general internal medicine doctors, they're doing everything. They're like what you think of in the US, like family medicine docs who live in rural areas that they're just kind of doing it all. Like it's similar. The GPs there do a lot of the work and there's a lot of burnout. And so I think I could go on about like a billion things that I learned from there. But I think the biggest thing going into this elective was to like understand the system and then see like examples of policy. So I did two weeks on the medical floor and then I did two weeks with like the public health group. And so both of them were great experiences in learning about how things work, what they have available to them. And then just how like innovative people are with like how little they have, I think was like one of the biggest takeaways I took from it. Um, I just think like also um, being Tongan and see, I, I consider Seattle and I go way back. I mean, I've, I've like always seen how, like how, like when she applied to medical school and those things to see her also go to Tonga and like watch these systems in place was I, of course, I said impactful before, but I think it really opened my eyes into how like s- systems are different, but they're also very similar in the sense that they're both they're both structures and they're both institutions. And I don't know, I also have this same dream of like going back and offering help if they want my help or do they? I don't know. You know, it's scary and it can be intimidating when these structures are seem bigger than you or like foreign to you, um, as Siale was saying. And so I guess my question for, I guess, all of us is, of course, you can approach this and like learn more and become more interested. But when you are, I guess, like an everyday type of person, I feel like an everyday type of person, like outside of medical school, even how would you start to get into this? How would you start to learn about health policy? Someone told me there's a quote and I'm going to butcher it because I don't have it like right off the top of my head, but it's, it's something like start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. And I can't even remember who exactly said that. And I think that's the big thing that's really intimidating about health policy or just thinking about systems in general. You're like, I am just one person in this big problem. And like, how can I actually change it? And I think 
knowing like it's okay if your impact is only small, like helping one person is still one person helped. And so I think when you can frame it as like, I am just going to do what I can. So even like as a medical student, like I can write a letter and I like, I can talk to a legislature and maybe I'm not going to change their minds, but like, at least I know I like went to bat for my community when it, when they needed it. And so like, or I can show up to a community event or like I can do something. I feel like this happens with med students or pre-meds. Like they think they're beyond like taking blood pressures or they're beyond taking, like checking someone's blood sugar or whatever. Like, no one is like beyond any task. And when you can just start with where you are and just doing very basic things, like those things are, I think one, they can make an impact, even if it's a small impact. And then two, like that's how you build trust within a community and like within different spaces that I think most people want to serve when they try to do this work. One of the things that I try to ground myself on is like really like people and their stories and their experiences and their feedback. And I feel that a lot of times, sometimes we go into something and we like want to like come in hot, but there's such a utility in just coming in going like, I have no idea what's going on. You all have done so much of the community work and understand these perspectives a lot more and understand like what is the needs assessment? What is like what the community needs for policy changes? And I'm just here to listen and to understand and then funnel it into like allowing me to like leverage what I'm able to do to do it. And I also sometimes wonder if it's just because, you know, child of immigrants, woman of color, I sometimes feel the weight of the world (laughs) on me and that I have to do everything. But one of the things I've learned is it's most impactful when you kind of like realize what your strengths are and what you're able to bring to the table. And then you like take that feedback from like other people to like support them. And that's like kind of my take on it. But again, also, I'm like not like the most health policy prone person. But that's like what I think about when I do community organizing or like trying to like engage in like creating sy- systemic level change ish. I love that. I think it does get overwhelming. And I I don't know why, but like when I think of health policy, like sometimes I think of like, oh, I need to like go down to the state capitol. I'm going to have to go sit in one of those like rooms and like prepare before the board. And I'm just like, I, I, I don't know anything like and I'm still trying to figure out like and I on gaps. I keep coming back to that because I don't know. But I'm like, they do not want to hear from me. I'm not. I am nobody. And it's really just not it's not that complex and it's not that deep. Like just get out there and I think work and service, like Ciali was kind of mentioning. And as Ha was saying, like, like you're not beyond a task, get into it. And it does seem big, but you can, you can manage. I think that's a great place to begin. And I'm excited to get that advice from, (laughs) from you both. Yeah. I think like anything, it's just like showing up and stuff and like, no one like really expects you to like, to be able to walk in and change everyone's like mind in the very first second that you get in there. But I think doing what you can and like being genuine and authentic, I think that's one of the most like important parts of about like the whole thing is I think, yeah, like there's a lot of preparation that goes into it, but I think people can feel like when you talk, when you're really passionate about something and um, you really care about something, like you would hope policymakers, like they notice those things and someone like, ask me like, what are you going to do when you finish this program and like go into medicine? Like, and honestly, policy stuff's probably going to be on hold for a while in my life. Um, But whatever you do, whether you're you're a doctor or anyone, like if something impacts you, like you should tell a policymaker, like how it impacts you and your family. And like, as a doctor, like we can talk to how it impacts our patients. And I think that's the privilege of going into medicine is like, people will listen to us because you have an MD or DO, whatever behind your name. And like, even though that's really icky, there is like power in that and knowing like I went through this because I want to help my community. And so using that to your advantage of knowing like, you know, I take care of patients day in and day out. And like, I see how this impacts them. Like policymakers, they should really, they should listen because you're on the grind every day, day in, day out, like interacting with people that these policies like impact. And so I would hope and I think a lot of them will listen just because of like the title that we're so privileged to have when we go through medicine. It's like it's so weird because I always like I'm always like, oh, I don't like the MD. But then I also <laughs> realize like uh, the MD actually helps give me some weight sometimes in doing things. And it's it's a tricky balance, you know, like I feel like I'm in so many convos with people talking about like navigating systems and when's the moment when 
you want to just leave the system, but then you're always feeling this fear, like maybe I need to be in it to like gain the knowledge I have to like actually create the change and like all of that. And I vacillate back and forth as anyone who listens to this podcast probably knows, because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, burn it all down. And then sometimes I'm like, I guess we have to be here to change things. <laughs> um yeah, I feel like I've struggled with that tension too. Like when you when you come from a community that's been hurt by systems, like the last thing you want to do is feel like you betrayed your community by like playing into the system. And so I think the other thing about policy though is like you don't know how to play the system if you don't understand how the system works. And so like you don't know how to burn it down until you figure out like the like the ins and the outs of it. And so I think that's like the other like impactful thing that comes with policy is like if I know how these things work, like then maybe I can actually change it. And like, maybe I can actually like burn it down one day and start with something better. But I feel like I go through that same internal tension, like every single day. <laughs> like I'm on the optimistic side today. It will probably change tomorrow once I like <laughs> dive deep into renal for uh, step dedicated. But one thing that I've like learned and has kind of changed my perspective about health policy and being in this system that not is necessarily like fond of the communities I come from is like, I will be in rooms that like many people from my community may never be in. And I will be in rooms that people from the system will never be in. Right. And so I think just the idea of like your existence as advocacy for me was like groundbreaking. Like I don't have to do a ton even though I feel like I might or need to or should, me just existing in this environment is advocacy also in a way, you know? I don't know how that sits with you guys, but... I do. I feel that is like something that I do think a lot about is like resistance just by like presence. Sometimes it comes back to like that thing that I said earlier about like having to like always feel like you have to do the most, but sometimes just existing is doing the most itself because the system isn't built for you to just exist in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like on that note, just like one thing I want to say is I think policy can be like a really draining space. I think in my mind, I have like one idea of like perfect or ideal and knowing like it's going to take a long time to get there. I think it can be like really frustrating and you can get like really down on yourself. And so like just like existing or like knowing like I'm in the fight, like even if I can't change it today, maybe I can get like one step closer to like where I want to be. And so like that term like perfect is the enemy of like better or whatever. I think that's the other thing when you enter like policy and like community work, like we're always working towards like the ideal, but like we can't be so hard on ourselves. Like if we can't get to the ideal tomorrow. And like you said, just like existing within a space and like showing up for your community when they need help. Like those are the things that I actually think are like the most impactful, like in the long run. Thank you so much for like sharing all of this, Siale. I feel like sometimes I feel like we just need like a five part series with just you because I feel like there's still so much more I want to ask about your experiences in Tonga, what you've learned from policy and all of that. But alas, I need to check on my pizza that might be burning in the (laughs) oven right now. But before we do close up, I'd love for you, like Eliza and Siale, to share like any like last few thoughts that you have or things that you really want to like leave or things that you feel like you weren't able to say that you want to tell to our listeners. We'll save the best for last. We know Siale's got this, but um, I guess I just wanted to say that like, it's worth it. You know, like the work you put in to change, even if it's not noticeable, right. Or just listening to, as Ha said, these patient stories or taking the time to listen to anybody or express how you feel like that, that makes a difference. And even if you aren't able to like see the, see like the fruits of your labors, you are planting seeds that, you know, many, maybe like a few generations later, there will be something to show for it. Yeah. I feel like I don't have like any, big thing um there's probably like a lot of stuff I'd like to say but I think yeah that quote and I'm sorry I'm butchering it but like start where you are do what you can like with what you have I think just knowing it's okay if you don't change everything today but like knowing that you fight and you're doing what you can like at least you know you can go to bed saying like I fought for my communities and like that's more than enough and like when you have a community like you'll keep working together to be towards like the perfect or the ideal but keep fighting 
Yeah, I love all of that, Eliza and Seale. And I do think that's like the thing that I always come back on is you can choose to do like whichever route you can like figure out policy. You can like stay in the system. You can stay out of the system. But as long as you always ground it um, and what is like most important to you and like your core beliefs and values, like I'm hopeful that you will find fulfillment and change in the way that you want to find change um so thank you so much for listening feel free to like follow us on instagram listen to us wherever you podcast and it's been like such a like a solid time dear listeners and i hope you all like have a great rest of your day i don't know the closing's always really hard i'm really yeah, sorry you did great, you did great. Uh, the pizza's not burning though so it's totally fine <laughs>